Hi everyone, I'm Jackie, and today in this video I'm going to be going over some more questions that appeared on August 2024 SAT in hopes that it prepares you for your next upcoming SAT exam. So let's jump into it. So this one, I actually covered a very similar one in my August SAT predictions, and it did appear in the exam. But so, this one, a quadratic function models the height and feet of an object above the ground in terms of time and seconds after the object was launched. According to the model, the object was launched from a height of zero feet and reached its maximum height of 1,600 feet 10 seconds after it was launched. Based on the model, what was the height and feet of the object 15 seconds after it was launched? Okay, so remember, if you ever see maximum or minimum, it's telling you the vertex of the parabola. And I can use vertex form to solve this quite nicely. So example, um, I know the vertex here, it happens at 10 seconds, 1600 feet. So vertex 10, 1600, that would be my um, center coordinates. So it'd be like, okay, so this is uh, X minus 10 squared um, plus 1600. And then since I'm given another pair of coordinates, important, it tells me it was launched from a height of zero feet. That means that um, another pair of coordinates here would be zero, zero that occur in the quadratic function. So I can use those, substitute them in for X and Y here. In doing so, I will get the value of A and I will have my complete quadratic module. Um, so let's do that. Zero equals A, zero minus 10 squared um, plus 1600. So here I would get that this is 100A plus 1600, negative 100A equals 1600. So I get that A is equal to negative 16. Therefore, a final model would be Y equals negative 16, X minus 10 squared plus 1600. Amazing. And then the final step in this process, based on the model that I have here, what was the height in the feet of the object 15 seconds after it was launched? So now I just have to substitute that in for X. Do, dee, 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 dee. Which this will be Y equals negative 16, 15 minus 10, that would be five squared. So times 25 plus 1600. Six, negative 16 times 25, it's negative 400 plus 1600. And therefore I get my answer, which is that at 15 seconds, the height of this object will be 1200. Wasn't that amazing? Continuing our journey. Oh my goodness, a circle equation. Okay, so a circle in the XY plane has a diameter with endpoints um, A11 and AD. So note, they have the same X coordinate where A and D are constants. An equation of the circle is X minus A squared plus Y minus 17 squared equals radius squared, where R is a positive constant. What is the value of D? So first from here, I know that the center, it's positive A, positive 17. So I can see all these coordinates, they have the same X value. I don't know what the X value is. It can be any value, doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna say um, here that let's say it's at zero and therefore the Y value here, like let's say it's at 17, another Y value would be at 11. Then I can find the distance between the end point to the center, which in this case it's six, so radius is six. And then if I wanna go up, um, I want to find the other endpoint. So the other endpoint will be on the other side of the radius, which would be here. And I would just do to find this 17 plus six, which is 23. And that would be, you know, the um, D value here. So important things to remember about circles and just to show like this would maybe look something like this to create a circle. Um, so the center coordinate, if you have two endpoints, if you do the midpoint of the two endpoints, it will lead you to the center of the circle. And just to prove that, like if I do 23 plus 11 divided by two, that will be 34 divided by two, which is in fact 17. Amazing, right? So know that concept for the exam. 
Okay. So this one too, um, a very similar one, if not identical, appears in Blue Book Exam 5 or 6. Students reported back. They had this um, exact same question or very similar, just different numbers on the exam. So let's see. A circle has a center G. Interesting. Okay. Sorry, I just want to make this a good visual for you. Okay. All right, so we have center G. Um, and points M and N lie in the circle. Line segments MH and NH are tangent to the circle. Okay, so I have um, M. We can put N here to create tangency. And okay, so then I have some external point. Let's say, well, it's H. And then they create these tangent lines. Okay, so if they're tangent, well, that could be maybe drawn better. One moment. Do we'll put it here. H. So tangent is creating these right angles, and then likewise, I also have from the center to the endpoint. This is giving me the radius, and from G to N, also giving me the radius. Okay, and then it says if the radius of the circle is one hundred sixty-eight, so. This is 168, this is 168, and the perimeter of quadrilateral GMHN is 3,856 3, millimeters. What is the distance? Okay, so then I have to find the distance between G and H. Well, first, first things first. So something important to take into consideration is that, um, take note of this, like tangent lines, tangent lines, that come from that come from the same external point. Mm -mm. Um, they, in this case, our external point being H, right? Um, they are always congruent. So R, always, no exception, congruent. So why is that helpful? Because um, then I know, like I can label this X and X. Now I can do two times 168, you know, for the radius, um, plus two X for the two sides here. And that's equal to the total perimeter, which is 3,856. And then I can, you know, solve two times 168, it's 336. So I get that two X is equal to 3520 and then divide each side by two. So I get that X is equal to 1760. So each of these would be 1760, 1760. And then a final step, I need to find the um, distance between G to H, which is, you can see I could do Pythagorean theorem. I could do 168 squared plus 1760 squared is equal to like GH squared. And I could solve that, however, saving time, um, hypotenuse, which is what we're solving for, it's the longest leg. So it, it must be larger than 168 and seven, 1,760. So looking at the answer choices, it must be 1,768. Isn't that amazing? All right, continuing our journey into an SAT classic, absolute value. Okay, so here I'm asked for important, the sum of the solutions. So I have x minus 8, absolute value brackets, is equal to negative x minus 8 um, plus 20. So since these two are the same um, expression inside absolute value, I can add this to the other side. So I can be like, OK, so x minus 8, absolute value, plus x minus 8, you see I'm just moving this over, is equal to 20. So now, since they have the same expression inside, pretend there's like an invisible one here. So when I combine them, it becomes 2x minus 8 is equal to 20. Divide each side by 2. So I get x minus 8 is equal to 10 in absolute value. And then since I'm solving for absolute value, it's equal to a positive output, which indicates there will be two solutions. To solve, I need to set it um, equal to its positive value and also to its negative value. So x is, in this case, equal to 18. 
and then I have one solution um, that this would be x is equal to negative 2. So my two solutions are 18 and negative 2. The sum of them would be 18 plus negative 2, which is 16. And that would be the answer. Wasn't that amazing? Continuing our journey. Oh my goodness, a trig question. Okay, so we have 2 cosine 90 degrees minus A. I'll continue times cosine B plus sine of A plus Y degrees multiplied by sine 90 degrees minus B, where sine of A degrees is equal to 0 0.50, cosine of B degrees is equal to 0 0.99. Zero degrees is less, okay, so B is in between zero and 90. Um, what is the value of the given expression when Y equals zero? Okay, so you definitely wanna know and utilize your trig, trigonomic identities here. So, let's apply them. So remember, like in general, cosine of 90 minus x is equal to sine of x, right? So looking here, I can say cosine 90 minus a, that's the same as sine of a. Um, likewise, here, sine 90 minus b, that's going to be equivalent to the cosine of b. Okay, so that can help us simplify because knowing that I can be like, okay, so here, this is just another way to say sine of A. So I would have two sine of A times cosine B plus sine of A plus Y. So just to show this one too, it says when Y equals zero, put in zero here. So this would be sine of a plus zero, which is the same as sine of a. So this would be sine of a. And then times sine 90 minus b, remember I'm making this to cosine. Um, so it's multiplied together. So times cosine of b. Okay, and so I have this plus sine in front. I have two values that are the same, cosine b. I could factor it out. This would be the same as cosine of b. Um, when I combine them together, it would be like cosine b multiplied by 2 sine a plus sine a. That's an a. Um, which becomes, so basically cosine b times 3 sine a. So remember, there's like this invisible one in front. Okay. And then my final mission, if it says that cosine of B is 0 0.99, so I'm going to go ahead and substitute it in 0 0.99, and then multiplied by 3 sine of A, and sine of A is just 0 0.5. So 3 times 0 0.5, and that should give me my answer which let's see what that is. Do, 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 times, oh my goodness, it's equal to 1.485. And that would be our answer. But you see how basically this is just knowing your trig identities and just the very classic ones that cosine of 90 minus X is equal to sine of X and sine of 90 minus X is equal to cosine of X. Trig identities, amazing. Okay, so make sure you know all these concepts for um, whenever you take your next SAT exam. And if you like this video, like, rate, view, subscribe to the channel, and I will keep posting more content per usual. And I will try not to take as long as a hiatus as I did. It was only a couple of weeks. Okay, so bye guys. I'll see you in the next video.